In creating it, Patterson took his regular beads and coated them with thin layers of copper, nickel, and palladium. He's not sure why, but when he puts those metal-coated beads in salt water and then zaps them with electricity, he claims they start giving off huge quantities of heat. If true, an astounding claim. This is the, the uh, guts of it. This is creating uh, heat. So this is water that you have flowing through there. Oh, it is. Right. It's pretty warm. Yeah. yeah. And so how much energy is this little cell putting out compared to what it's consuming? One, uh, one watt. It's consumed on one watt, and it's putting out 200 watts. You know this sounds too good to be true. <laughs> well, it may sound too good to be true, but this is what we looked at. This is what the, the scientific evidence is here. I mean, um, you're looking at it. I mean, you can't disavow what you're looking at. In a situation like this, of course, neither seeing or touching is necessarily believing. The fact is it would take me or any other scientist months of careful tests to determine what is really going on here. Still, there are plenty of people who do claim to have looked at the Patterson cell in detail and have come away believers. I believe him to be potentially one of the most important inventors of our, t our modern time. Patent attorney and engineer Charles Prescott remembers being very skeptical when Patterson first came to him with his new energy cell. I questioned it, I challenged it, I looked at it in every way that I could. My engineering background uh, told me uh, that it shouldn't work. But Prescott says he couldn't find any weakness, and evidently neither could the U.S. Patent Office. To date we've received two patents from the U.S. Patent Office. A third uh, will be issuing uh, shortly. It is environmentally benign, uh, environmentally harmless, and, and we use water as a fuel. 26-year-old Jim Redding is Patterson's grandson. Last year, he started a company, Clean Energy Technologies Incorporated, to market his grandfather's device. If the technology is what we believe it is, the implications are tremendous. So we don't know what, what element this is. All right, that's the big question. Now. That's the big question right now. If his new company manages to get off the ground, young Redding predicts that by early next century, his grandfather's device might very well have uh, the means of producing energy uh, in a very portable, say, igloo-sized container, and you can produce uh, enough electricity to power your entire house. I really don't expect uh, that the general public will accept it uh, until they have um, something in their front yard running their uh, mower <laughs> and uh, a Patterson cell on, on the lawnmower and where they don't have to put gasoline into the thing. The general public can be forgiven if it's skeptical, of course. This is not the first time we've been told that a new energy source will do away with our dependence on non-renewable energy sources like coal and oil. And then there are the vast majority of scientists for whom all this sounds too much like perpetual motion. Is this just another false alarm or is it the real McCoy? In the second part of our story, we'll go into two laboratories where the device is being put to the test. Inventor James Patterson's story would be interesting if he were all alone in his search for a new energy source. It is more interesting because he is not. In fact, it's gotten downright crowded. Science editor Michael Gillen continues his story. Patterson is only one of dozens of inventors around the world who claim to have invented an ideal energy source, non-polluting and inexhaustible. But this device is different because of the inventor's distinguished track record and because this device is attracting serious interest from major companies. Most importantly, Patterson's device appears to have been verified by independent scientists at prestigious universities. Still, for many, the device just doesn't ring true. I don't dismiss it as poppycock. What I'm saying is that the burden of proof lies upon the people who are working on the Patterson cell. Howard Birnbaum is a physicist at the University of Illinois, and like many scientists, is wary of a device that isn't easily explained by the known laws of science. If it's producing that much excess energy, there is no known chemical reaction which can uh, account for that. Uh, if it is a nuclear reaction, then there's no known nuclear reaction which can account for it. Noted MIT physicist Herman Feshbach concurs. 